question two from block four, which is electricity and magnetism. Yep. And question three again is from block three. And now question four, a student investigate the rate of cooling, like how much time the liquid will take to cool down. That's refers to a rate of cooling. So a student investigates the rate of cooling in air. Like uh, in this case, we are investigating the rate of cooling of air of heated block made of different metals. So there are different types of metals and we are finding how, how much time or at what rate, like how much temperature change every second that is refers to rate of cooling. So we have to plan an experiment to investigate how the rate of a cooling depends on the metal from which each block is made. Like how the rate of the cooling is affected by the type of the metal used. The following apparatus is available to the student. So student is having a cylindrical block. You can see a hole is there uh, so that uh, we can uh, place a thermometer. A student is having a cylinder block of uh, different metals, each with a hole of a thermometer on uh, as figure 4.1. In a figure 4.1, a thermometer is there, uh, can be placed. Other apparatus normally available in the school lab can also be used. In your plan, list, you have to list, in your plan, you should list any additional apparatus. Look, we are determining or we are finding the rate of the cooling. So what is another apparatus, essential apparatus we need to determine? Because rate is always refers to time, like something changes with reference to time. So what we need? To determine the rate. So again, we need a stopwatch because uh, rate is something where changes with, with reference to time. So we need a stopwatch here. So first thing, we need a stopwatch to investigate the rate of uh, cooling of the air in a block. Explain how would you carry out investigation and include the measurement you would take. So how we will carry out this investigation How we'll do this uh, experiment and what student did, as you can see, that a heated block of a metal of different, uh, of uh, a heated block made of different metals, the temperature of each block is increased by placing in a hot water. So what we did, we placed this in a hot water. So first this block is placed in a hot water. Then what we will do, we will remove this block from the hot water. We take out this block out from the hot water and initially we'll record the temperature of the hot water or the temperature of the air, the initial temperature of the air inside. And then we will remove the block out. And it's not like we'll record the final temperature. What we can do, we can record the temperature for every 30 second interval till three minutes or 180 seconds. Like when time is equals to zero initially, when the beginning of the experiment, we recorded the temperature, say the temperature of the uh, air inside was 80. Then after 30 seconds, we'll record temperature. After six, another 30 seconds means total 60 seconds, we'll record another temperature. Then after another 30 seconds, we'll record a temperature. We'll continue until three minutes, normally like three to five minutes, we can continue, which is about 180 seconds. So using this, we can have a bore value so we can identify what is happening to the rate of the cooling or what is the rate of cooling of this air inside the metal. So the second part, explain how would you carry out the investigation? So how we will do this experiment? So first thing we will remove uh, first thing, we'll record the temperature. Or we can also remove uh, the metal out from hot water. Then we'll record temperature. 
and we will start the timer or the stopwatch then what we will do we'll record temperature after 30 seconds for three minutes and then we will repeat the procedure other methods so that's how this experiment can be the procedure or this experiment should be done so this is the answer for the procedure additional operators have already mentioned we need a stopwatch whenever we are finding a rate of a cooling or heating then state key variable that must be controlled initial temperature same time duration good So what are the key variables we must uh, keep constant or cap constant? So <clears throat> the starting temperature of a block, as you mentioned, Prophet, uh, the room temperature can also have the effect on rate of the cooling. The temperature of the water in which this block was immersed, that should also be same. The size of the block, the mass of the block should also be same. So many variables are there. Uh, the initial temperature, the size of the block, the temperature of the room or surrounding or the lab where we are carrying out this experiment. Uh, these are the parameters, uh, variables which must be kept constant. Then draw a suitable table with column heading to show how uh, you would display your readings. So draw a suitable table. So here they specify table, so we don't need too many tables. Just on one table, we have to complete them. So what we can do, like we have a time. Uh, then we have three different containers, A, B, and C, or three different uh, metals. or three cylindrical uh, blocks made from different so only for time we can complete but even if you don't write any number that is also correct then this is a temperature for block with metal a or and then metal b and then metal c you don't have to write the number here If we write, because what we are doing for a prominent, for a more accurate result, instead of measuring initial, you can mention initial and final temperature, but instead of measuring the initial and final, what we are doing, we are finding the trend here so that after every 30 second interval, how much temperature is there or what is the change in temperature, we determine that. So that will be more prominent, like more accurate as compared to just measure the initial and final temperature. Because there might be a, a different rate of the cooling during the experiment. So we can identify the trend as well. That's why I did not measure initial and final temperature. I measure a temperature for a 30 second interval till, till three minutes or for three minutes. Delta theta can be measured. I'm so, not saying it is wrong, but I'm saying you don't get the trend. For example, if I say the initial temperature is 30 or because we are investigating the rate of a cooling so initial temperature say 80 and the final temperature example 65 and you measure in say three minutes or 180 seconds so this this can this can you can identify the rate of the cooling by changing temperature divided by time but this does not give you a trend in rate of a cooling because you will have the initial value and you will have the final value but you don't get the trend if you plot a graph between temperature and time. So to plot a graph, to get the trend, you need more points. That's why I'm recording more values for time, for like more values for temperature for a certain time interval. 
So whenever we are investigating the rate of a collect, we need more points so that we can identify the trend easily. Then explain how would you use your result to reach a conclusion. So what we can do, we can plot a graph between time on y-axis, sorry, time on x-axis and temperature on y-axis. And we have, will have the point. So this will be the shape of the graph. And remember the temperature and time graph, what slope represent or gradient represent, it represent the rate of the cooling. Means in the beginning, it will cool down faster, but with the passage of the time, the rate of the cooling decreases. As the slope is decreasing, so rate of the cooling will also decrease. Is it uh, clear this experiment about the rate of a cooling of air in a block, a cylindrical block? Yes. 